Hello, Stuart. Hello, Sam. Okay, we're just going to pretend that we've not we've we've not had a five minute conversation before this. <laughs> so, I'm going to ask you about thirteen or fourteen questions using the Wheel of Fortune. So here we go. Um, I'm I'm locked in by the government. I I, I can't. Um, I can't escape. So, oh, okay. but I think you mean. In, do you mean in my career? Uh huh. I do. Yeah. I mean, I mean in my my career, uh, through sheer stumbling around with no plan is the is the honest answer to that question. Uh, I had no idea what I was going to do after high school. Um, I I kind of liked science topics and also kind of arty topics. And the careers advisor said, "Why don't you do psychology? Because it's about people and it's also science." And I went, "Oh, all right." And then I kind of stumbled into that. And then I've just kind of carried on with it ever since. That's that is the that's the God's honest truth on that question. And uh, I know that may not sound particularly inspiring or conscientious, but that is that is what happened. I did. Uh, it's actually the one I did my job talk on when I first uh, did my job talk for the, the SGDP. I did a meta analysis on education and intelligence and whether education raises intelligence. And the the conclusion of the meta analysis is that it, that it that it does. Um, and I'm I'm really happy with that, just for the sheer amount of work that went into um, selecting all those papers. And I've now learned that it's completely miserable to do a meta analysis, and I'm not planning on doing one ever again. But I am happy that I have done that one uh, in, in the past. Yeah. Well, I already. I already spend a long time sitting at my computer at home, so it's not a, um, it's not super new to me. But um, the thing I would try and advise people is not to do what I've done, which is become obsessed with the coronavirus. And I know we're all sort of obsessed with it, and it hasn't, it hasn't infected. I've said to people it hasn't infected my respiratory tract just yet, but it has infected my brain in terms of just I can't stop thinking about it. And you know the economic angle and the scientific angle and the the health angle and the political angle and all all a cultural angle, all that stuff. Like I just can't stop reading and thinking about it. And um, to basically to the exclusion of anything else. And so my advice to people is try to just I I, I know a, a few friends of of them um, uh, have just stopped themselves from reading anything about the virus um, or 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 only in very set periods of the day they're allowed to read stuff. And I think that's probably good advice. It's not advice that I'm taking myself because I can't help but read about it. But I know that other people have found some success there. Um, I was very grateful that my supervisors when I did my PhD um, allowed me some slack, some leeway to just kind of do some stuff that I was interested in. So even though my project was on um, children's uh, reading abilities and and, uh, and and things like that and, and educational uh, stuff, they also allowed me to run a parapsychology replication of a like psychic power study, which got me interested in the whole replication crisis movement uh, and, 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 and so on. Um, so I, I think giving students a little bit of leeway um, to do stuff, of course, you don't want them to just do any old thing and, and, and never actually finish the project they're supposed to be doing. But um, there's a happy medium, I think, of, of allowing people a little bit of um, uh, free reign to, to do interesting stuff that takes their fancy. And I, I, I can send you the one, but it's it's one of the worst papers I've ever seen. And it, I always love to go back to it because it's an example of how terrible a published scientific paper in like a, a reputable you know, medical journal it was in this case. It had, you know, just obviously wrong numbers in all the tables. It had a graph that didn't even have I it didn't have either axis uh, written on it. We had no idea what was what was uh, on on the graph. Um, it was it was incorrect. We wrote a response in saying, please correct this paper. And they just didn't. It's still there. It's still published for everyone to see. Um, uh, I, I can send you the paper if you're interested. But um, I love reading that because it reminds me that we must be critical of the scientific literature. Um, a positive one is a, is a paper that I um, that I uh, always recommend to people, which is um, the paper by Talia Arconi and, and uh, Jake Westfall on um, choosing prediction over explanation in psychology which uh, is, a, is an absolutely fantastic paper and, and changes the way you think about how we should be doing our research, especially in reference to the replication crisis and so on. So um, I would strongly recommend anyone who's interested in psychology to read that paper. It's in Perspectives in Psychological Science, I think, in 2018, I think. OK, I think your that paper that you're referring to, the first one, I think that was what you gave in the riots talk last year. I did.
Um, depends on who's asking me the question, if I want to be honest about this. But um, yes, obviously, yes. Yes, I think about it all the time. Yeah. Um, the way if it was reviewer number two who said it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it very often when I get reviews on papers. I think it very often when I get edits on stuff. I think it very often um, when I read about the terrible state that science is in, I think, wow, this is a, ter what, a, what, a what an absolute mess. But then you think, well, the only way to fix that absolute mess is to stick in and try and make some changes from the inside, which I know you're doing, uh, and I'm I'm trying in my own way to do as well. So um so yeah, I think that's that's when I really feel like this is what, what are we doing all our time when I when I when I see the you know the, the the unreplicable papers out there and like the one I mentioned a minute ago, you just think, what is the point? But the point is that science is really important and we need to get it right. And so the only way to fix that is for scientists to change it from the inside. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a town called Pennycook in Scotland, and uh, which has about 18,000 people in it or something. So it's not tiny, but it's not massive either. And um, uh, my claim to fame is that the first ever citation to one of my papers was by a guy who at that point I did not know, uh, whose surname is Pennycook, so the, na the name of my hometown, which is a really great coincidence. Uh, but um, uh, it actually spelled differently, spelled the old way that Pennycook was 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 uh, was spelled back in like Victorian times or whatever. Um, but I always found that like a really weird and eerie coincidence. Other otherwise, there's nothing to say about the town. Okay. Well, they can say that you were born there. <laughs> oh, you can have a blue plaque at one point. No, that means. I have um, learned to read Japanese. So mm -hmm. two, two of the three alphabets in, in Japanese, not the one that has 6,000 uh, Chinese characters in it. I'm, I'm trying with that one, but that's taking a bit longer. But um, it's like, when, and what, so when you go to Japan, uh -huh. it's like when you have just come out of the optician and you have a new pair of glasses and you realize that you can see things that you couldn't see before. So you can read all the, you can read all the words everywhere that are around you. Because uh -huh. there's a lot of words if you're in somewhere like Tokyo, the, you know the shop fronts and the signs and all that are, there's loads and loads and loads of words everywhere you, you look and the first time you go and you don't know any Japanese it's just you know it's completely incomprehensible but then when you go again it is like a complete revelation and it changes the way you you you, you look at the whole thing so um I'm proud of having done that recently to learn how to do that I was very very satisfied with that I always like to ask in interviews What's a paper that you've read recently that you think is is interesting? And I think that reveals the people's answer to that reveals um, whether they actually do read papers or whether they just you know do the stuff that's narrowly within their field and they're not that you know. I, I think I think reading wild, widely is a really is a really good aspect of a, of a of a student and just being interested more generally in science and the the, the debates around it rather than just the the narrow specific stuff that you're doing in your in your project. So that's why I always ask that question. I think that um, that kind of separates out people quite nicely. Especially if they say, I read a paper and I thought it was really rubbish and here's why, uh, or really good and here's why. Um, if there's a bit of kind of critical engagement there, then I find that, um, I find that very helpful. Uh, I spend time arguing about work-related things with people on the internet, mm -hmm. uh, which is probably not I ideal. Um, but I, so I play I play guitar sometimes, and I uh, I um, I've recently in the in the during the COVID lockdown found re rediscovered since I was a teenager. I haven't done it since I was a teenager. Playing multiplayer uh, online video games with my friends. We've been playing Call of Duty Warzone, and it's great fun. I'm terrible at it. I get shot within minutes, but I uh, I've been like screaming down the microphone at my friends get down get down helicopter helicopter you know all that sort of stuff and uh it's been great fun yeah so i've been doing that in the evenings sometimes yeah i don't think it helps me unwind though i think it makes me much more anxious than i, than I otherwise would be um i can't say that i live by this I'd say that I, I, it would be good if I could, uh, could live by this. Um, but um, something that there's an aspirational quote is um, what my uh, postdoctoral supervisor, Ian Deary, always used to say um, is uh, is uh, tell truth and shame the devil. Right. It's from it's from um, it's from uh, Henry the fourth part one, I think. So it's Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. Tell truth and shame the devil. And I think um, 
that's a that's a scientific thing which we should live by right because um so much of the problems that we're having in science right now are from people being just not not sometimes being fully dishonest and being fraudulent mm -hmm. but just a lot of the, the 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 kind of more common prevalent problems are because we're just not fully uh honest about what we've done we hide things a little bit we don't quite explain exactly how we made our decisions or why or when we planned them or when we decided on them um and so i think just being completely honest and transparent it, it, no matter where you are even if it makes the paper look less good and makes the paper look like a messier story um is the most important thing we can do and um so i can't possibly say that i you know live by that ideal or anything but I, but i think it's an important thing to um to, to aspire to Uh, the reason that I sort of started taking science seriously, and I know this is like a total cliched thing because everyone says it, uh, was because I started reading books by Richard Dawkins. Um, and um, I know he's very controversial and he's written lots of controversial stuff recently and so on. But um, I think that's all all part of the, all to the good because he's such a, he's such a kind of, um, uh, well, he, he emphasizes the fact that having debates about stuff and having, you know, rational conversations about um, difficult issues is such an important fundamental thing in science. And that's kind of what got me interested because I'm interested in controversial stuff. Uh, generally, that's why I'm interested in the replication crisis thing. That's why I'm interested in intelligence and con cognitive abilities and, and genetics. And, and, you know, all these areas are really controversial and, and um, you have to really be careful with with. Um, how you reason your way through them. And uh, I think there's a lot to learn from his books, especially some of his early stuff. I think he combines uh, in his early phase making really important contributions to science, like the idea of the extended phenotype and the genes I view in evolution and so on, popularizing stuff with, with writing beautifully about it uh, in a way that few people have 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 um, matched just the sheer um, inventiveness and the 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 the, the, way, the beautiful prose that he that he's he is able to uh, come up with so that's why he's my hero but you shouldn't have heroes but he's as close to that as yeah pet peeve what's your pet peeve i mean there's a lot of things yeah. but um i think um I think generally, my pet peeve, and I think it fits back into this thing about not not pe people not being entirely truthful. It's people who, when you have a conversation with them, you get the impression that you're telling them stuff that they didn't know before you had the conversation, but they are giving you the signal that they did already know it. So they're kind of going, oh, yes, I know that, I know that, I know that. And you're saying, no, no, you, you, I don't think you did, I don't think you did. And I think there's a lot of problems with... Um, again in science in that respect it's kind of a dunning-kruger effect right it's people that don't quite realize that they don't have knowledge about stuff and that you know the, the whole thing about the more you know the more you know that you don't know all that stuff and um, it's kind of the, the people who do the opposite of that and just nod along um in this way that suggests that they're not being curious or self-critical in any way um i think that's one of the most annoying things that i find uh, among many things that i get annoyed by but that's 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 one that's a good one you don't drink alcohol you don't drink alcohol. Uh, explain yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've tried very hard, and uh, everyone that knows me, all my friends and everything, constantly are trying to get me to drink alcohol, and I've tried. I just can't get over the taste. I can't get over how horrible it tastes. Uh, and I know people are now saying, I know thinking, well, you just have to keep going, and eventually it'll taste nice. But why should I? I, I don't have that view for other foods that I don't like eating or you know drinks that I don't like. Um, I just I I always have a nice time when I when I go out. Uh, I never feel like I need it for like, I'm a very high extrovert, you know, on the on the personality scales. So I don't feel like I need it for, you know, the whole social lubricant thing. I'm not interested in in, in, in that particularly because I'm always happy to chat away to people. And so I don't feel like I need it for its social function. I don't like it for its taste function. I realize I'm missing out on a whole world of like comparing different tastes and all that. But I can do that with interesting food that I like. Um, so so I'm um, yeah, I, I'm just not interested at, at the moment. Why do you not uh, snort cocaine? I mean, maybe you do, but uh, presume, presuming you don't, why do you not do it? It's really good. Anyway. Apparently, I've never done it either, but I'm saying someone could ask you that. In a I told you that was off the record, Stuart. Philosophical question. God, I mean, I, that's why I started the recording after that conversation. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I think the point I'm trying to make is that we all make very um, unfair comparisons. It's like unavoidable, and we, yeah. we, you know, we, we always compare 
how other people who are doing either by yeah. our age or by our discipline or whatever. Yeah, constantly, yeah. And I wonder what whether you have any advice or would you want to comment on um, on that? Like, because obviously the glib advice is, oh, you should never fo- you compare compare yourself to others. But I wondered whether there's anything funny to say about that. Well, I say I th- I, th- I would say um, that the obsession with comparing yourself to other people is again one of the issues that plague science right the issues of people being obsessed with their h index or -hmm. their citation number or their number of published papers or their um grant money yeah all all the different things that 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 make all all these all these you know meaningless or you know Mm -hmm. generally meaningless prestige indicators which don't tell you the stuff we really want to know which is how good is people's research does it actually make a difference to people's lives is it replicable is it open and transparent all the stuff that you know we 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 talk about so um yeah i'm going to go with the cliche thing and and say stop stop comparing yourself on you know meaningless metrics and just think about you know is the stuff you're doing worthwhile right now and uh is there a way to is there a way to change it custard apple i've written that down because that's worth a mention about half an hour ago for the first time, I ate a uh, custard apple, which is a, a weird fruit that I bought at the local shop yesterday when I was doing my like masked, gloved uh, shop. I'd never seen one before, so I just bought it because I just thought I was I was just curious about it. And I would strongly recommend looking this up on online to try and get one because it's the best fruit I've ever had. Apparently, Mark Twain, uh, according to Wikipedia, Mark Twain said it was the most delightful fruit known to man, or something. And I agree with him. It's amazing. It's like eating a custard dessert, but it's but it's a fruit. It's re- it's remarkable. Um, I can strongly recommend finding that uh, if you if you want. The reason Sam is asking this question is because I mentioned it to him because I just finished eating it when I got on the call. So thank you again, Stuart. Thanks very much. No wave. Goodbye. You know <laughs> as they do. Bye. <laughs> Bye.